look at the rockets and Mars and you just boggle the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up in them. LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ESTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 6th, and on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9 awaiting its 7.29 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Launchpad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And a hello from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Shiva Bhardwaj, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX. Now, you are watching a live webcast for our 13th Starlink mission and our 17th mission for this year. If you've been following along at home, we've had to stand down this mission a few times now due to unfavorable weather conditions, as well as an out-of-family reading on one of our ground system sensors. But all the vehicle systems and ground systems looking healthy today. Uh, weather, we're tracking one item, possible cumulus clouds along the ascent trajectory, so we'll keep you apprised of that as we hear more on the net. Now, to date, we have launched more than 700 Starlink satellites to orbit. If you're not familiar, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in remote and rural areas where connectivity is often limited and sometimes completely unavailable. We will be performing two second stage burns today to deploy those 60 Starlink satellites about one hour into the mission. Those two burns allow us to deploy the satellites into a circular orbit, which helps them get to their final orbit, about 550 kilometers above the Earth, much faster. At this point, we are just under T minus nine minutes to go until liftoff. All systems looking go for on time liftoff this morning. Now on your screen is a live view of the Falcon 9, that's our two-stage launch vehicle. Falcon 9 is 70 meters tall, which is greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. This particular booster flew for the first time in May, taking Bob and Doug safely to the International Space Station on their historic mission. It also flew again in July for the ANASIS-2 mission for the Republic of Korea. And the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle that you can see covered in soot from its previous two flights, that's what we refer to as the first stage. Its job is to accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to space with the help of nine Merlin engines that it has at its base. We will be attempting to recover this first stage for the third time on our drone ship named, of course, I Still Love You, you can see on your screen there, about 624 kilometers off the east coast of Florida. Now, our first stage is designed to be reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment between flights. It'll actually be the 15th time this year that we're flying a flight-proven booster and the 43rd time that we're doing so to date. Atop the first stage is the black carbon fiber interstage, and on top of that is Falcon 9's second stage. It has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which is actually hidden from view inside that black interstage. And once the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into the mission, the Merlin vacuum will ignite to carry those 60 Starlink satellites onto a circular orbit around our planet. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since the T-minus 35-minute mark. Uh, as a reminder, we use a rocket-grade form of kerosene called Rocket Propellant 1, or RP-1, as the fuel, and superchilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, as our oxidizer to power Falcon 9. Currently, RP-1 is fully loaded on both the first and second stage, liquid oxygen nearly fully loaded on both stages. LOX will be continued to be topped off right until the last two minutes before liftoff. Now, at the very top of the rocket is this nose cone structure. This is what we refer to as the satellite fairing, and inside that is a stack of 60 Starlink satellites. 
The fairing's job is to protect the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during the ascent portion of the mission. But once we get to the vacuum of space, we actually don't need it anymore. So we'll jettison those fairing halves as the second stage continues its journey to orbit. Now, once one of the fairing halves is brand new, but the other previously supported two Starlink missions, one in May of 2019 and another in March of this year. And we will be attempting to recover both halves today using our recovery ships named Mystery and Mischief. Now, at this point, quick update on the weather. Uh, the 45th Space Wing gave us a 70% chance of go, the primary concern being cumulus clouds along the ascent trajectory. Uh, still waiting to see if we will be go for launch at 7.29 Eastern time. But from what I've heard, we are trending uh, towards green for launch. Now with that, vehicle, satellites, weather, and range looking good for an on-time launch. Uh, weather, of course, with that watch item right until the final minutes before liftoff. Now, as many of you know, the Starlink team is well into the first phase of testing with our private beta program. During this time, the Starlink team has been collecting latency statistics and performing standard speed tests on the system. The initial, tests, the initial results from these tests have actually been really promising, showing super low latency and download speeds in excess of 100 megabits per second. As we've mentioned previously, we are still in the beginning stages of building out our global satellite internet constellation, but the initial results do look promising, and we're looking forward to rolling out a public beta later on this year. Earlier this week, we also heard from emergency responders in, the, in Washington state who have been using Starlink for their purposes and to help bring the residents of Malden, Washington internet service as they rebuild their community following devastating wildfires that hit that area back in August. A representative from the Washington State Military Department said he's never worked any ta tactical satellite equipment that has been so quick to set up and anywhere near as reliable. And the way that these emergency responders deployed Starlink is actually representative of how it currently works best in remote and rural areas where internet connectivity is sometimes unavailable. As I mentioned, the network is still very much a work in progress, so if you'd like to help build it out, uh, head on over to SpaceX.com and check out our careers page. And if you'd like to receive updates on Starlink news and service availability in your area, please go and visit us at starlink.com. Now, at this point, we are T minus four minutes from liftoff. Just heard on the nets that we are go on weather. Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of countdown. Vehicle is looking healthy. The, uh, at this point, the first and second stages have nearly a million pounds of that rocket-grade kerosene RP-1 fuel on board and liquid oxygen. And the, uh, the clouds that you're seeing there around the second stage is from actually that super chilled liquid oxygen. We uh, do periodic vents. You actually just saw one there as we continue to top up those propellant tanks until the T minus two minute mark. And when that cold oxygen comes into contact with the moist Florida air, uh, it actually causes water vapor to condense and form actual clouds around the vehicle. Now we're expecting the first stage to finish up prop loading, so it'll close out locks loading just under 10 seconds from now. And the uh, second stage will be shortly after at about T minus two minutes. Now about T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9. Close out. There's that call out for locks load closeout. About T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will transition into startup. That means that the rocket's internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And they will continue to have control of the vehicle all the way through the rest of the mission. At this point as well, the Starlink payload is continuing to look healthy. No issues being tracked by the Falcon 9 team at this moment. Weather is go for launch. Range is currently green for launch. Coming up uh, around T minus two minutes, we'll hear a second call out here for stage two locks load complete. Stage two locks load is closed out. Beautiful shot of pad 39A with the uh, the crew tower to the next of it, not using that today. 
Coming up shortly here, we'll actually see some venting from that large truss structure on the left-hand side of the vehicle. You can see it starting there. That uh, truss structure is what we refer to as the transporter erector. That's what rolled out Falcon 9 to the pad and provides uh, electrical power as well as the propellants that we've been loading into the vehicle. At this point, we're just venting out liquid oxygen that is in the lines on the transporter erector before transitioning into the final steps before liftoff. Falcon 9 is in startup. So with that call out, Falcon 9 is now on autonomous internal control. Coming up, we'll hear from the launch director, see if they are, will give their final go for launch. LD is go for launch. So with that, Falcon 9 teams ready to go, vehicle ready to go, weather and range ready to support. Why don't we listen in to these final 30 seconds of terminal count. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one flight press. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition, lift off. Stage one propulsion is nominal. T plus 40 seconds, Falcon 9 successfully lifting off from Launchpad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Uh, we're taking that Starlink orbit to its first, Starlink satellites to its first targeted orbit and eventually a circular orbit. We actually just throttled down for maximum dynamic pressure, or max Q, on those nine Merlin engines. We'll expect to hear that call out here shortly. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. So call out there for having gone through the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's when the loads on the vehicle are the highest from the combination of our velocity, but increasing while the density of the atmosphere decreases. Now coming up in just about a minute, we will have three events happening back to back. First will be main engine cutoff or MECO. That's where we'll shut down those nine Merlin engines. You can see the plume expanding from them on the back of the rocket here. That'll be in preparation for stage separation. Now, stage separation is where the first and second stages will separate. First stage will continue on a parabolic trajectory towards the drone ship, while the second stage continues on to the final event, or second engine start number one. That's where that Merlin vacuum engine will ignite. And once it lights up, it'll propel the second stage along with Starlink satellites into orbit. Actually heard earlier that we've started chilling on the turbo pumps of the Merlin vacuum engine to get it ready for that full flow of propellant and oxidizer. So coming up just about 12 seconds from now, expect to see Miko. It's main engine cutoff, then stage separation, and then at about T plus two minutes and 45 seconds, second engine start number one. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. So there is successful stage separation and second engine start. You can see the grid fins deploying on the left-hand side of your screen. That's the first stage. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Merlin vacuum engine starting to glow brightly with the heat of that combustion reaction. First stage making its way back towards 
Acquisition of Planet Earth Maryland. coming up here. Should be fairing deployment Planet shortly. Separation confirmed. There's a call out on the nets and a beautiful shot of the Starlink satellites. You can see on the right hand side there a little bit of Planet Earth. Actually, you can see a fairing half there trailing away. Now, as a reminder, we will be attempting to recover both the fairing halves today on our recovery ships, Miss Tree and Miss Chief, that are also stationed at the, in the Atlantic Ocean. Second stage heading towards its targeted drop-off orbit. Now, while that's happening, the first stage is actually going to execute two burns to make its way back to Earth. You can see right now that we are actually pitching the first stage vehicle to try to get those Merlin engines facing uh, towards the atmosphere. Signal Bermuda. Those periodic uh, gas clouds that you see along the first stage are actually from our attitude control system. And once we get to the top of the Earth's atmosphere, we'll ignite three of the nine Merlin engines for entry burn. That'll help slow down the first stage as it re-enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And the second of those burns will actually happen much closer to touchdown on the drone ship. That's the landing burn, where we will ignite just a single Merlin engine at the center of the set of nine. And that'll slow down the vehicle rapidly before hopefully a soft touchdown on our drone ship. On the right-hand side of your screen, continuing to see the Merlin vacuum engine continuing to burn. This is a pretty long burn for the Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, this will be going until about T plus 8 minutes Second stage on and normal. 48 okay. seconds. Call out there from the navigation officer that the second stage is on a nominal trajectory at this point. So flying right down the middle of the bars. Cool shot from the interstage on the uh, left-hand side of your screen that's looking up at where the second stage previously was, looking out towards space, because those Merlin engines are pointed towards planet Earth Coming up in about a minute from now, we'll expect to see that entry burn start. Uh, entry burn will expected to last about 20 seconds. Again, that'll be three Merlin engines, and usually you can actually see the plume uh, sort of creeping up the side of the rocket since the vehicle is right now uh, both going thousands of miles an hour. At this point, the first stage has reached the highest point of its orbit, the apogee. So it is on the downhill portion of the uh, of its trajectory. You can see Earth getting bigger and bigger. Stage one, FTS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. Startup of those three Merlin 1D engines on the first stage. Second stage continuing to burn nominally. Expected loss of signal, Cape. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. So with that, we will continue on the first stage to apply some attitude control from those uh, attitude control thrusters. And as the atmosphere gets thicker and thicker, the grid fins will actually start to gain most of the control authority. Second stage on nominal trajectory. And uh, the, the grid fins will continue to fly Falcon 9 in, creating, giving us aerodynamic control. Looks like we just lost the link as it re-enters there. Here's a shot of the drone ship. Again, that's 624 kilometers off the east coast of Florida, awaiting first stage for a landing attempt. Second stage continuing to look good. That glow that you see on the nozzle extension is normal. That's just from the, the heat of the combustion reaction uh, radiating out to space through the nozzle. Now, part of the reason why the second stage has such a large nozzle is to try to get the most out of the propulsive gases that we're producing in the propulsion chamber. And so that allows the second stage to be a little more efficient in the vacuum of space. Coming up here, we expect to hear a call out for landing burn start on the first stage. That'll be just a single center Merlin landing engine. One, landing burn startup. Shortly after, we'll expect to see landing leg deploy, and then hopefully a touchdown on the drone ship. Terminal guidance. 
Stage one, landing leg deploy. Looks like right in the center. That marks 61 successful recoveries. Third time for this booster. Now, coming up about eight seconds from now, second stage is also going to shut down its engine for second engine cutoff number one. Keep an eye out for that on your right on the right hand side of your screen. Seco one. And successful shutdown of the Merlin vacuum engine. Navigation officers will be assessing whether we have ended up in the right orbit. And uh, most of the way up, we were right down the middle. Nominal orbit insertion. It's a good call out there. We're in the first of two planned orbits. Now, the second stage is going to coast in this orbit for about the next 30 minutes. We're actually going to take a break while it's doing that, but we'll leave you with an animation that shows exactly where the stage is in this coast phase. And we'll see you back here at T plus 42 minutes for reignition of the second stage's engine. See you back shortly. Expected loss of signal, Bermuda.
expected loss of signal, Newfoundland. Acquisition of signal, Goonhilly.
expected loss of signal, Goonhilly.
Acquisition of Signal, Diego Garcia. Welcome back to our webcast coverage for our 13th Starlink mission. Now, if you're just joining us, we had a successful liftoff at 7.29 a.m. Eastern Time, successfully recovered that booster. Second stage is on a nominal orbit, and we're just awaiting about 10 seconds from now what's called second engine start number two, that is ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine to bring us into a circular orbit. MVAC burn two, and good shutdown. So super fast second engine start number two, and then followed by second engine cutoff number two. That was to raise uh, the perigee, or the lowest point of our orbit, to be circular and uh, similar to the apogee. And uh, we also, looking at the data, have confirmation of a good circular orbit. And we actually got some cool shots as well from, from recovery. This is a shot from our drone ship. Just read the instructions. And you can see on the horizon there, that is the first stage from today's mission on, of course, I still love you. Again, that's the third landing for that booster. 61st overall recovery. And uh, we actually caught a, a fairing half today as well. That, that's the active fa fairing half. And uh, this fairing half has flown three times, landed it right square in the middle of the net. We uh, did have to, to ab abort the catch attempt on the passive half, but we have, we're in the process of recovering that from the water on uh, our other recovery vessel. So from here, second stage is going to continue uh, in this orbit for about the next 
uh, 16 minutes. During this time, it'll actually start to pick up a spin on its central axis. It'll start using its attitude control system to start a small rotation, and that's to give the Starlink satellites so the momentum they need to space themselves after they do their deployment activities. That's expected to happen at about T plus one hour, or around 8.29 a.m. Eastern Time. So, we'll see you back then. Expected lost the signal at Diego Garcia.
acquisition of Signal Tasmania. Welcome back to our coverage for the Starlink launch. Now, if you're just joining us, we had successful ascent of the first stage at 7.29 a.m. Eastern time. We recovered that first stage as well. Second stage is currently in a circular orbit around the planet, about 275 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And coming up next will be deployment of the 60 Starlink satellites. Uh, we actually just shot, saw a shot of them earlier. Now the second stage has picked up a slight spin. It uh, picked that up from its attitude control systems. And that's to give the Starlink satellites enough momentum so they can space themselves out after deployment, which is expected just about uh, 40 seconds from now. And uh, you may have noticed it's a little bit dark. We're actually on the nighttime side of the planet. And a cool shot right now from a camera on the top of the second stage looking up at the stack of 60 Starlink satellites. Starlink is part of our space-based internet constellation. And we're continuing to build up that network with today's launch. So coming up about 10 seconds, expect to see payload deployment. Starlink deploy confirmed. So you can see the Starlink satellites gently floating away from the second stage. Now, uh, shortly they will, once they've had a chance to space out a little bit, they'll deploy their solar arrays. And over the next few days and weeks, they'll start to distance themselves out using their onboard ion thrusters to make their way to their final operational orbits about 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So happy to see them off and on their way to complete their mission. And with that, it's actually going to bring our webcast coverage to a close. We want to thank, give a big thanks to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. If you're interested in getting future news about Starlink, head on over to starlink.com and sign up for updates. With that, we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day and a happy end to Scrubtober. <laughs>